I'm a thief. I stole this car. No, I didn't. It's like my own car. <laughs> Anyways, uh, grab a blanket, turn on for lights. Uh, if you're a thief, don't watch my videos. Murderous drug dealing thieves who kidnapped my nephew's dog. My nephew, who I'll call D, lives about three miles down the road from me with his lovely wife, whom I'll call Anna, and their three beautiful, sweet, loving pit bulls, Ty, Bella, and Jixter. About four years ago, not far down the way from us, maybe seven to eight miles away, some people were having a small barbecue, and things got heated and out of hand. These people weren't good people. Apparently, a few days prior, the man hosting the barbecue had a falling out with one of his friends. Anyways, this guy shows up hoping to patch things up, but his wife and a couple others start a ruckus. Gunfire was exchanged, and the host ended up killing his friend. Word was that they were a couple of drug heads, drug dealers, and thieves. At the time of the incident, a lot of the partygoers were drunk or high, and as if that wasn't bad enough, their three-year-old daughter was there in the midst of this fight with bullets flying. Luckily, she wasn't hurt. The host and a few of his buds were arrested and held awaiting trial for murder and accessory to murder. Fast forward about two months, and his wife and baby daughter are still there with their other drug-dealing, thieving friends hanging around. I have heard that. There were several break-ins in the area from my neighborhood, and I heard this from my neighbor who is a volunteer fireman. Things like TVs, computers, money, jewelry, and basically anything of great value was carried off by these crooks, and some people suspect that this girl and her clan of drugged up hillbillies were responsible as reports of vehicles fitting the description of theirs were given. Unfortunately, my nephew D and his wife Anna were victims of these assholes, and not only did they steal two big screen TVs, Anna's laptop, D's PlayStation, and several games, $800 in cash, he had to pay his utility bills and insurance, but they also stole his fur baby Jixter. They tried to steal Bella, but she went all crazy on them, so they left her alone. Luckily, Ty was with Anna at the vet getting his booster shots since he was six months old and was a newer addition to the bunch. Dee's neighbor, whom they were really great friends with, witnessed them coaxing and then trying to force Jixter in the car and called him on his cell phone to ask if maybe one of his friends or relatives were picking up Jixter for any, any reason, and of course he said no. The neighbor was already in his car preparing to go to the local gas station, so he decided to follow them, and coincidentally, they were also going to the gas station as well. I should state that, where we live is out in the rural parts surrounded by woods and farms, where the local gas station is the closest store out this way for about 20 miles in either direction if not more. Everybody knows everybody, and this gas station is the place to go find out anything about what's going on around here. The people that own the gas station know my nephew D, and he's really good friends with them, as he stops by every morning on his way to work, and frequently when he needs gas. They also know his dogs really well too, as they're always riding with him. Especially Jixter, he's always riding shotgun. Anyways, back to the goons. When they pulled up, the girl went in followed by the neighbor telling her, and she was bragging to the station owner about her beautiful new pit bull she just purchased from a breeder and all this other bullcrap like that. The station owner took one look at Jixter and knew he was D's, and that he would never in a million years part with him. The station owner knew who she was, and after she left, the neighbor filled him in and they called my nephew to tell him to stop by the shop so they could talk to him. After he stopped there, he got all the details about what went down. He headed home to check out his house, and that's when he discovered his house had been broken into. He wasn't too concerned at that moment with calling the cops, he just wanted to get his precious Jixter back, and that, that's what he damn well intended to do. So he grabbed his 9mm, hopped in his truck, and made his way to the bitch's house. When he got there, she was on the porch with some other guy drinking and smoking, and some other guy came out of the trailer. She asked him who the hell he was, and what he wanted, and the two guys tried to play all tough telling him to leave. He told him, I'm not leaving this fucking property until that skank ass bitch gives me my damn dog back. She yelled to him that they didn't have a dog, so my nephew yelled Jixter's name 
And about that time, Jigster jumped up on the couch in the house, tearing at the blinds, barking at hearing Dee call for him. My nephew said, oh really? Tell me again how you don't have a friggin' dog. And my friggin' dog on top of that? He told her that his neighbor saw her take him, and that the station owner recognized Jigster as his. She tried to say she got it from some breeder again, and then one of the guys chimed in and said, it's best that he leave before he ends up like the last guy who trespassed. My nephew responded once again, I'm not leaving this fucking property without my dog. The other guy and the girl said, you want to bet? You'll be getting off my property. At this point, my nephew lifts his shirt to sew his holstered 9mm and says, oh yeah, motherfuckers? This 9mm right here says otherwise. Now that's my motherfucking dog, and I want him out of here by the count of three, or I'm going to fucking swear I'm going to bullet each one of you motherfuckers with your name on it. Before he could even begin to count the three, one of the guy opens the door to the trailer and out runs Jigster happily to my nephew. He backs away, opens the door to his truck, Jigster climbs in, and before he leaves, he tells them, I swear to God, if I ever see any of you motherfuckers anywhere near me, my wife, my dogs, or my property, again, and if I ever even see you drive down the goddamn road I live on, you all be fucked up. Because I will not hesitate to pump you sons of bitches asses full of lead. Now do I make myself clear? And with that, he got in his truck and left. When he got home, he then called the cops to report the break-in. His property could not be retrieved, but luckily, his insurance had to cover it and the people were investigated. A while later, some were arrested on drug charges and breaking and entering, and the girl was eventually evicted from her property. My nephew, his wife, Jigster, Bella, and and Ty, they, they still live in the same house with some extra added security. You know, like cameras, alarms, and even a gate for their driveway. Ever since then, though, they haven't had any more break-ins or dog napping since. So, I don't think my nephew has to be the one to worry about meeting these jackasses again. I think they are the ones who should be worrying about crossing paths with my nephew again. Van broken into, missed them by minutes. Last night was damn cold in my hometown, so we brought our big dogs into the garage. They usually reside in our fenced-in backyard. When outside, they tend to bark at absolutely anyone seen near the front of the house, so we've never been overly concerned about thieves and the like. Everything went more or less as usual for a weekday night. My parents were both asleep, with my brother who lives downstairs, and I staying up pretty late. He and I both went outside a couple times roughly between 11.30 p.m. and 3 a.m., by which time both of us were in bed for the purpose of letting the cat or smaller dog out and for allowing the big dogs to do their business before locking them back in the garage. I woke up this morning to my brother telling me that my mother's minivan had been rummaged through at some point last night. Nothing was taken. There wasn't really anything of value in there, but someone had clearly gone through it. My brother remarked that when he had gone out last night, he noticed that the motion sensing lights had been tripped. Mind you, these lights aren't very sensitive. They don't go off willy nilly, nor do they stay on for more than a couple minutes. Knowing this, my brother had taken his gun with him but saw nothing suspicious before coming back inside for the night. Sure, it was creepy knowing that this happened mere meters away from me. My room is at the front of the house with a window looking out directly onto the driveway where the van was parked. Not to mention that I had walked out onto the porch while these thieves may have been out there. I've racked my brain trying to remember if I saw or heard anything out of place, to no avail. What's more, I went to the shooting range recently with my SKS. Normally I keep that sucker loaded and ready, leaned against the wall of my bedroom just in case. But after returning this time, I kept the magazine empty and the rifle itself in a case under my bed, where it stayed until this morning. If I needed a weapon quickly, I would have been out of luck. Never again. But it gets better. I more or less brushed the whole thing off shortly after talking to my brother. I figured it was just some opportunistic punk, maybe a homeless guy looking for some place, a warm place to chill, you know? That is, until 
I got on Facebook a few hours ago and saw a post from a former friend. Apparently, at least three other cars in the area were broken into last night before ours got hit. The thieves had a stolen loaded gun from one of them. The Chartham Brick Thieves Never been on this Reddit much, listened to the stories though, and thought I might as well tell mine. This took place about four years ago. I was around 14 years old at the time, and me and my friends used to, and still do, explore abandoned buildings. I live in Kent in England, and as anyone who lives around there knows, there aren't many abandoned sites around that area so that meant revisiting the same sites a lot. And one of the most popular sites was Chartham Asylum. As you can see from the site, it's decrepit and empty to all hell. It's what we call a shell site. There are four buildings on the site. And the story takes place on the main large building. So me, my friend Callum, and his younger brother went to the asylum one weekend to have another look around as there were parts of the building we hadn't seen before. So we've been there for a few hours, looking around and taking photos. Now at the time, I had a quite expensive looking camera, a 5D MK3, that just recently came out. So I was a bit worried about it getting damaged or someone seeing a teenager with an expensive camera and thinking they can steal it off of me, which was a constant worry. In the building grounds, there's an area in the middle that's open to the air and we'd heard rumors that there were a couple people who'd visit the site and steal the old bricks from the roof to sell. Unfortunately for us, they appeared out of nowhere on the roof. They have what looked like a crowbar or a similar tool they were using to knock the bricks out. And we, we saw them. We were standing outside in the open area for a few seconds looking at them and for some bloody reason, one of them literally just looked around and noticed us completely unprovoked. So. We all ran out of sight back into the building and hid in one of the rooms. In hindsight, it was not the best decision when we could have just run off the grounds, but for some reason we didn't. We heard them running around trying to find us. I managed to make out one of them and say, he's got a fucking camera taking pictures. They thought I was taking pictures of them stealing the bricks or just wanted to steal my camera, probably both, you know. We, we waited there for a few minutes until we couldn't hear them anymore and left the room and started walking down one of the hallways to get out as we were a bit spooked. We were walking down one of the main hallways and heard running behind us. I looked at my friends and pointed to one of the holes in the floor to hide in. They all shook their heads and ran off down the hallway, but I stayed to hide in one of the holes. The holes in the floor were hatches to the underfloor heating system and full of aspidos. I scooped it up the wall under there and waited. They soon walked up looking in all the rooms, tapping the crowbar on the floor above my head, which was bloody scary. And one of them said, Look there. What if they went there? I can only assume one was gesturing to the holes in the floor. I genuinely thought I was going to get beaten to shit and have my equipment stolen. I kept quiet and went prone. One of them dropped down and looked around and said, Mate, I can't see shit down here. Fuck this. Help me out. Luckily for me, None of them had a torch, or thought to use their phones or anything like that since I was only about a meter away from him when he was down there. I waited a while and jumped out and legged it out of there, and made it to the tree line. I called Callum and they joined me a few minutes later. Him and his brother went into a room around the corner, which they never checked, thank god. Sorry, this story isn't grisly or violent, but it's the prospect of what if they found us that really scares me. Thanks for reading. If anyone wants to use this or the pictures or provide it or YouTube or something like that, I give my full consent. Always lock your doors. So this happened about a month or two into my first year of college. At my school, 
All freshmen are required to live in the dorms. My dorm in particular was a bit of a ways away from everybody else. It was literally across a major street from the rest of the campus, which is fine. I had a bike that would be stolen a few weeks after this incident, but I digress. And since you were all so far away from everybody else, I ended up getting close with all the people in my dorm. At first, both my roommates, Steve from one of my other encounters and I were kind of paranoid and we would always lock our doors even if we were going to the commons right next to our room. But eventually, as we got to know everybody on that floor, our guard went down. We would leave the door unlocked when we went into the commons, went to hang out in a friend's room. Sometimes I would just leave it unlocked when I went to the cafeteria or even to class, stupid, but nothing had happened yet. On this particular day, I had just come back from an IM soccer game and I was feeling a bit worn down. So I asked Steve and our friend Arthur if they could go to Arthur's room right across the hall because I wanted to take a nap. But they grab their guitars and they head over and I, I, I get into bed. I see the door is unlocked, but I figure if Steve is going anywhere, he's gonna come back and put his stuff back and I'll lock up when he sees me passed out. Yeah, I wasn't a smart child growing up. I don't remember how long I had been asleep for. I really don't remember the time, but I woke up to people talking. The walls are so thin, so I tried to ignore it, and I was trying to go back to sleep. Then I realized that the people talking were too loud to be in the hall. They were in my room. Steve must have come back, and he has had his people over while I was sleeping, whatever. Finally, I realized neither of them are Steve and they are speaking in hushed tones. At the time, I was too tired to realize what had happened. I sat up, but I didn't have my glasses on, so I couldn't really get a good look at them. I could, however, tell that they were two African-American gentlemen around college-aged, so I figured they were from one of the other floors. This was our conversation. Um, hey, can I help you? Uh, yeah, does Andrew live here? Does it look like Andrew lives here? Oh, okay, well, we'll leave, bye! So they both rushed out, and they closed the door behind them. My dumb ass is thinking, okay, they thought someone they knew lived here? Honest mistake. And lay back down to go back to sleep. But then I finally realized that there were some weird things about them. Number one, all the doors had names of the residences on it, so there was no way anyone could have mistaken my room for Andrew's. Number two, the door was, to my knowledge, shut and the lights were off even if you thought you knew someone there it doesn't make sense to just walk in number three if who you thought you knew wasn't there why would you linger so then i snapped wide awake and i jumped out of my bed trying to assess my surroundings surely enough my shit was everywhere they went through our drawers desks etc thankfully they didn't take our laptops but they did take the 80 dollars i had in my wallet and a fifth for my fridge. I texted my friends in the hall about it, and a couple texted me back, saying some black guys had come in their room shortly before, asking for random people who didn't live there. I went to my RA, who was useless. You shouldn't assume they did it because they're black, that's racial profiling, what the fuck? Regardless, I called the police, and made a report. Anyways, I went on Facebook to the dorms page and the university page, and posted a warning to lock doors, because there were two guys walking around, going to different people's rooms. A few people responded, saying the same thing happened to them. What's crazy is that it wasn't in one neighborhood, it was all throughout campus. These fuckers were hitting every dorm stealing from college kids. The week after that, I would constantly check my door. It was weird feeling uncomfortable in my own room. It just didn't feel as private as it did before. It was also weird to me that... They were just in my room after they'd gone through all of my shit. I wake up in the middle of the night just to check my door to make sure it was locked. A couple weeks later, they were arrested. Well, it sucks that they stole shit from me. I'm thankful it was just two local thieves and not some crazy homeless person. Still dorm thieves, let's not meet.